So welcome. We're presently trying to finish up uh, chapter three today. Uh, we've been on chapter three. This is our fifth uh, session on chapter three. Uh, we've been looking at uh, relationship on the winding uh on the winding road of life, you know, looking at relationship to uh, the seasons of life, uh, for, uh, being a child, adolescence, or on teenage years, to the young adult life, to the middle uh, adult life. And today we're going to be looking at the late life, you know, late life starts from about, you know, uh, mid 60s is what the book says and that's generally agreed on some people will look at it from 61 you know and you know until that you know that also can be broken down to about three four places we have the uh young old life which is anyway from 61 to maybe 75 uh you have the middle or the old life which is somewhere between 75 and 85. You have the oldest old life or old old life, uh, which is anywhere from about 85 till about 99. Then you have the centenarian, which is 100 plus. You know, you can break it segmented in different ways, right? But we're just going to look at it as a whole stream of the late life, you know, anywhere from about um, uh, mid 60s till debt you know that's what we're going to be looking at today we'll look at that uh stage in our life and pretty much looking at it from a relationship standpoint right as we look at that stage in our life uh so but uh good 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 welcome to another time uh as i get to do i'm going to bring up my slides here and we're gonna shoot good life right again that's the book again as those are the authors my shoes and robert waldinger uh, both uh, had the uh, Harvard uh, School of of um, uh, which studies adult development, you know. So pretty much the book is a compilation of the results of the study they've been doing. They've been doing the study for more than eighty five years now, you know. So it's pretty much a compilation of results from the study. So this is like a real life event study result that we're looking at. And with a B to maybe lend a thing or two from it that we can apply into our lives and uh, make our lives better, you know. So that's the whole essence of what we're doing, you know. So, so let's go to today's uh, session. And pretty much is again, it's chapter five, part five here, talking about relationship on the winding road of life. This is our fifth take on that uh, in chapter three. And pretty much we're looking at the, the, the continuum of life, right? We all come as children, we get born with children, right? And in that continuum, we're dependent. We come in dependent when we're born, right? Uh, we, we begin to then uh, lose that dependency and gain independency as time goes on. We lose that dependency and gain independency as, that, as, as, as we grow, right? So we'll grow through from childhood, we'll go into it, our teenage years where you know our 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 struggle our desire you know for independence is probably at the height you know um it's also being being for enforced by the hormones that begin to grow that begins to flow into our bloodstreams right so as adults you know there's puberty period you have hormones flowing you know begin to differentiate the the, the boys from the girls you know, as children, it really didn't, doesn't make a difference. You see, uh, the girls are with flat, flat, flat breast, you know, flat chest, you know, you couldn't differentiate the sex, you know, but with, with hormones beginning to flow in, in adolescence, with puberty setting in, you know, there is a differentiation. You're no more looking at that girl without any feeling anymore, you know, but because there are now differentiations, differentiating features in, 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 in the genders, you know, that kind of differentiate or bring some other meaning to friendship, you know, and, and, and there are ways to relate at that stage of life. There are ways to relate at that stage of life, which is not the same as when you were children, preteen years, you know, the beauty of looking at all the stages is to understand that we change. And as we change, life has different expectations of us 
you know, the, the expectations of us as children is not the same expectations of us as teenagers. It's not the same expectation of us as young adults. It's not the same expectation of us as uh, in our midlife. It's not the same expectation of us in late life. Even if, even as as those expectation changes, you know, our internal expectation of ourselves also is changing, right? Because there are hormones that are flowing to our bloodstream as we enter into each stage of life. Those hormones that that trigger puberty in, 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 in our teenage life, our adolescent life, you know, force us against our map, maybe uh, laziness or or, or 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 ineptness to grow, right? Because those hormones determine, you know, features that differentiate our gender, right? You know, for men, beards, for women, breasts, and all the other features that begin to differentiate the genders, right? And as we go into our young adult life, you know, then those hormones begin to stabilize, as it were. Those hormones that kind of it kind of just forced themselves into the scene and, and destabilized us. Destabilized us, we begin to get a bit of stability with those hormones. And just as we get those stabilities, we go into our midlife, you know, and we have new hormones begin to flow into our bloodstream, you know, taking us into uh, adolescence, um, taking us, sorry, into um, uh, what they call that thing, uh, menopause and all of that, all the things that begin to trigger in the midlife, midlife. Then we go into our late life when we are supposed to have stabilized all of those disturbances of, of, of menopause and we're pretty much settled, you know, getting ready to leave the scene. You know, so all of those things have happened to us, you know, it's not that we decided, it's the way life is structured to happen, right? It will happen to you, it's not because you sin, it's not because you made a mistake, it's not because you offended somebody, it's not because God does not like you, they are structured to happen, right? And whether you win or lose when they happen is a function of your understanding of, 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 of these changes, both internally and externally. Right, and that's the reason we, we, we're studying it. That's the reason why it was studied by the Abbott School, you know, so that we can we can we can we can win, we can win, even in even even in these changes, you know, like Isaac Newton would say, he says, I have gone further, I have done better, you know, than those that have gone before me because I sit on the shoulders of, of giants. I sit on their shoulders. And that's what we should do also. You know, but people have taken the pain to do this study. We can use the study to win in life, to win in life, right? Like we look at the first Corinthians chapter 10, verse 13. There's nothing you're going through that's strange. There's nothing you're going through that's extraterrestrial, right? It's all a human issue. You're going through a human problem. You're going through a human challenge, and human challenge have human solutions, right? There's, whatever you're going through, you're not the only one. People have gone through it before you, and they succeeded. Some failed, but a lot succeeded. You can learn from the success. You can learn from the failure and do better, right? 